We hear a lot about saving species on the brink of extinction. Animals, however, that are cute and well-known have a lot better chance than species who never make it onto a bumper sticker. Connor Knighton tells us that that is a reality that goes back many a year. Someday, if you are in the right place and if you are lucky, you will look up and see an eagle on the wing. It's a sight to stop your heart. The very first broadcast of Sunday morning featured this report from Cobbs Cook Bay, Maine, where bald eagles were on the brink of extinction. The national bird is an endangered species. 40 years later, the eagle population has soared thanks to protections put in place by the Endangered Species Act. With your support and with the help of the Congress, we can reclaim and preserve the natural beauty of America. In the decades since President Richard Nixon signed the Endangered Species Act, the landmark law has grown to cover more than 2,400 species. The good news is that 99% of them have not been declared extinct. The not so good news is that only 2% have recovered, like the bald eagle and the American alligator. Recovery takes time, a lot of time. Check oh, out the- he's down there? Yeah, he's way back hey, down there. Okay. Consider this little guy, the dusky gopher frog, listed in 2001. 43.1 millimeters. Nearly two decades later, there's only 200 or so in the wild, all living around this one Mississippi pond. They're ready to go. These are very fit. Enter biologists bearing Tupperware. You guys are big chubs. You're going to do good. It's a picture of the Endangered Species Act at work. Inside of the plastic containers are more than 300 frogs bred through in vitro fertilization. That one will be back in the spring to earn his pay. They're being released at a second site in Mississippi in hopes that enough will avoid predators and disease and make it to adulthood and mate. This one's gone. <laughs> but time is just one of the challenges to saving a species. Another is money. We currently don't have enough money to recover more than probably 25% of all the species. So under current funding scenarios, we cannot recover everything. I'm not sure we can even save everything from extinction. Attorney Jake Lee is the director for biodiversity at the Environmental Policy Innovation Center. Not only is there not enough money, he says, the limited funds that do exist are frequently misallocated. There's huge biases uh, in which species get the most money. I'm gonna guess it's the cute ones. The cute ones are a big part of it. Lee says if you're endangered or threatened, it definitely helps if you are also cute, majestic, or economically valuable. Those are the species that frequently get the lion's share of government funds. But for every polar bear or sea otter, there are hundreds more, like the fairy shrimp, the New Mexico meadow jumping mouse, or the purple cat's paw freshwater mussel. 40% of endangered species are plants. There are entire groups of Hawaiian plants that are very, very endangered. They're, they're down to sometimes just a handful of individuals left. And whenever one of these lesser known species makes the news, it's almost always because of a conflict with one species, Homo sapiens. The courts agreed with environmental complaints that the completion of the dam would destroy the only known habitat of the snail darter. From the snail darter in the 70s. Well, the owl ain't, ain't worth 10,000 jobs or 5,000 jobs. To the spotted owl in the 90s. Because they want to have us give over our land and turn it into a frog resort. To the little dusky gopher frog who leapt all the way to the Supreme Court last year, endangered species are at their most controversial when they endanger profits and property. When you got that call, had you ever heard of the frog before? Never heard of it, never. In 2011, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service told Edward Poitivent that around 3% of his family's 45,000 acres of land in Louisiana had been designated as critical habitat for the dusky gopher frog. But no frogs actually live there. They're all 40 miles away, back in Mississippi. There's no realistic possibility that a caravan of frogs would hop down the road and magically find my land by some sort of divine or froggy inspiration. The government says the frog lived in this area before it was endangered, and Poitivin's land has the special ponds needed for its survival. 
Well, the designation effectively takes our land out of commerce because in order to develop it, we have to get the federal government's permission. It's not that they have taken your land. It's still your land. No, but they've effectively taken it. Earlier this month, the eight-year battle finally came to an end. The government abandoned its efforts to mark his property as critical habitat. But despite these long, drawn-out struggles, every once in a while, the Endangered Species Act works as fast as a fox. At Channel Islands National Park in California, these foxes had nearly gone extinct when they were added to the endangered species list in 2004. Today, they represent the speediest recovery of any mammal in the history of the act. The island foxes now show up even when you're not looking for them, as we discovered mid-interview with biologist Tim Coonan. No carnivore lives in a smaller, and what do we have? Got one? That's right behind you. Timing is everything. Yeah. It's an important time in the history of the Endangered Species Act. This summer, the Trump administration is expected to finalize a series of new regulatory changes to the act. One major revision would be to publish the cost for protecting and recovering any new species proposed for the list. We asked the Interior Department's Deputy Chief of Staff for Policy, Greg Rankus, about it. The law is very, very clear. The listing decision can only be based on the best available science in commercial information, not on the cost of listing the species. But if you know that cost, don't you think that might influence whether people are more likely to protect it or not, if you hear that it's obscenely expensive? Well, I think the public has a right to know. I think we want to be transparent in the decision-making process. Another change would likely reduce protections for threatened species on the list, the step below endangered. We want to accomplish the objective of the act. We want to protect and recover endangered species and threatened species, but we also want to do it in a way that strikes a regulatory balance, that protects people and the public from you know, over, over committing to this issue. Changes to the act are necessary, says Jake Lee, but not ones that can make recovery more difficult. The Endangered Species Act has recovered 54 species. It's prevented hundreds from going extinct. But that's not good enough. That's the problem. We need to find much better, faster, cheaper ways to make it work. Otherwise, we're not going to keep pace with the extinction crisis. Many species may not have much time left. According to a recent United Nations study, plants and animals are becoming extinct at a rate faster than any time in human history.